morning, everyone. Morning. Welcome to worship on this burr cold day in which we're waiting for Izzy, not that Izzy, <laughs> the big storm Izzy to arrive tomorrow. And uh, hopefully you all have all you, that you need to stay home and stay safe and warm. Uh, some announcements we have today include the fact that there are now copies of the annual report both in the Narthex and in Bailey Hall. Um, and there'll be some in the mailbox. So uh, it'd be great if you have a chance to look at it before next week's annual meeting, which will take place immediately after worship next Sunday. And we'll also include a soup and bread luncheon um, for those here. And those of you who will be joining us from Zoom at home, you're welcome to make yourself some soup and bread also and uh, dine with us. Um, we'll probably like move you from table to table while we're eating and then um, put you in a great spot to see us um, when we start the meeting itself. Um, tomorrow night at seven o'clock, um, we, we as in the Royal we, the church, our church will join with our brothers and sisters from throughout the North Shire um, for the Interfaith Council's um, Martin Luther King Day program. Um, it starts at seven. It's, um, you can join us via, it's all via Zoom. Nobody is gonna be in person. In fact, our speaker is up an upper, of state Vermont um, joining us from there. Uh, so uh, hopefully some of you will take advantage of this opportunity. Uh, also today we're having Sunday school and uh, we also have um, David who's here had a wonderful idea um, for our whole entire wider community um, to send Valentine's to the four um, nursing home facilities in, the, in Bennington County. And um, that means hundreds are needed. And so there's a bunch to get us started for us to sign that um, Tammy brought today. And so those are out on the table. And in addition, it's your first shot at ordering Girl Scout cookies too. Um, they don't need the money now, right, Tammy? No, you don't have to, to pay until they, the cookies well, arrive and you get them in your hands. Um, so if you, it's never too early to order Girl Scout cookies. When will they arrive, Tammy? Um, we're thinking about the second week of February. The second week of February? Oh, so early this year. Like in about three weeks, you're gonna have your cookies if you, if you sign up for them. So um, definitely um, take a look at all of that. That's it for the announcements at this point. And um, so I invite you now to um, join in singing Immortal, Invisible God Only Wise for those of us here. It's on uh, page it's number 103 in the red hymnal.
invite you to join me in the call of worship. We come this day, precious God, as people in need of your steadfast love. We gather this day, water changing God, as people looking for signs. We worship this day, gifting God, as people who confess Jesus as our Lord. Living water, flow through our worship. Nourish us with your loving presence. Draw us ever closer to you, that our empty vessels may be filled and that our dry souls may be transformed into fountains of love, life, and joy. Amen. Let us join then in those words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Girls! Do you ever remember your dreams when you're just from when you're sleeping? Yes. Do you? Yes. That's great. Sometimes they tell you to have a pad of paper and a pencil right next to your bed so that you could, if you wake up and you remember one, you might be able to put something down. I tried that a few times. I couldn't read what I wrote because I because <laughs> oh, <that is> <laughs> I'm doing it in the dark without my glasses on. You know? <laughs> Doesn't work very well. But um, when you think about the dreams that you have right now, the dreams in life. Is there anything special you dream for that you want to have? A dream, like a, something that um, you want for your family? Yes. What would you dream for your family? I just want to um, be my family and my family themselves. Just something to stay alive as long as we can. Because so, some reason, my family is very important. For sharing all of that. That's a pretty, those are pretty big dreams, but um, anybody else? Kelly, you got any dream? Anybody got a dream for your school? Anything you want to happen at, with school? I think it'd be good. How about for this church? Anybody, you got a dream for this church? Anybody out there got a dream for this church? To be, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the beginning. For the, pews to be full. for the pews to be full, that's a dream for sure. Um, well, the reason I'm talking about dreams is because of what's happening. Do you know why you don't have school tomorrow? Other than the fact that the big storm's coming in? Yeah. Why, why don't you have school tomorrow, Philly? Yes, it's Martin Luther King's birthday. Technically, his birthday was yesterday. But the, tomorrow's the day that it's a national holiday, which it hasn't been a national holiday. Everybody else here, it, it's happened in our lifetime. It was before you all were born, but the rest of us, it's only happened since, um, since uh, in the, it happened in the 80s. So um, it's only been a holiday. And um, do you know who Martin Luther King was? Kelly, do you know who he was? Yeah. Well, he was he was a leader 
but not one that got uh, voted in. He was a leader of, um, it was, it's called civil rights. And so what that means is that when he was a little boy and then growing up and then becoming an adult, um, there were lots and lots, there were laws and then there were things people did that made, that treated black people and brown people and Asian people differently than every all white people. And so he worked hard, he worked his whole life trying to um, change laws, trying to uh, make sure people without a voice had a voice, um, helping make sure people, everybody got to vote that, was, that could vote. And so he did lots of things like that. And, the reason I talked about dreams is, and what you're thinking of, you might have seen his I Have a Dream speech, which was in Washington, D.C., which was a big, there was a the huge, if you ever see pictures of it, the whole, the whole area in front of the Washington Monument was filled with thousands and thousands of people that came from all over the country to hear him and to hear other people speak and to um, be together. It was a hot August day back um, almost, 60 years ago, um, next a year and a half from now will be 60 years. So um, yeah, so that's why you have you have the day off tomorrow, as do lots of other rest of us, because it's we're supposed to remember all that he did, all that he started, and the work that's still going on in his name that people are still doing. Is he? Mm -hmm. Yep, that everybody would be, everybody would be able to live their life fully and fairly. So let, I'll say a prayer now, and then you all will get to go out and Tammy and Scott have a fun lesson for you. Mm -hmm. Loving God, may we continue to work to make Martin Luther King's dream a reality by stepping up and speaking up for people who might not be heard, for people whose life is challenged is, and who um, are treated differently because of the color of the, their skin or the religion they practice or the nation they came from or all the other ways we have of sometimes not treating people fairly. So be with us in the work you call us to. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all can go and have a good class. <laughs>
we anticipate the wedding feast, the celebration of your presence and our connection forever with you. When our lives run dry, we rest in the hope that you will replenish us. We await the hour when you come and reinvent the world. With patience at times and sometimes without it, we plead with you to transform our lives and provide what we can never provide for ourselves. Help us to serve as your agents of mercy and love. Today, we bring before you those whose hurts weigh heavy on our hearts and minds. Today, that would include all of those who love Bill, who has gone on and on to do life in you. We pray healing prayers for Mary and Bob and all of those who have tested positive for COVID. And we especially hold in loving care and lift up to you Congregation Beth Israel in Texas. And they find peace in that place that was the place of challenge yesterday. Oh God, we trust you to take the sometimes challenges of being person of faith, and we ask that you fill us with the richness of new creation in you. We submit ourselves to your transforming power and your wisdom to make us into our true selves, the people you made us to be. With joy, we praise you for your wonderful power and grace, coming once to give us what we needed and coming again to make all things complete. We give thanks today for the blessing of the Congregational Union Church of the Walks of Wallingford and their pastor, Bob. We pray that Josh's travels will be safe ones. Oh God, we place our trust in you. Help us to also believe in the glory you have revealed. And we look expectantly toward the fullness of the future we bring. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Invite us now to open the red hymnal to number 150. Um, as we sing together, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
whether your jars are empty or full of wine, whether your gifts seem mighty or small, they are gifts to be treasured and shared, just as we are gifts to be treasured and shared. Let us share ourselves and our gifts with the world today in faith or electronically or by mail in days to come. Please join me in the doxology. bless the gifts we've given and the gifts we will give, that through these gifts, we may continue to build up your kingdom of love and mercy and peace here on earth and here in this community. We ask this blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. The psalter today is Psalm 36, 5 through 10. <clears throat> Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens. Your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your judgments are like the great deep. You save humans and animals alike, O Lord. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. Oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you and your salvation to the upright of heart. Before I leave the Psalter, I just want to make a, a plea. Um, we are in need of lay readers for 2022, and I'm going to be putting a purple sheet out on the table for you to sign up. And thank you very much for those who've already volunteered. You can choose the month that you would like to redo your reading. Now, as far as the gospel reading, it's John chapter 2. Verses one through eleven, and I want you to picture the mother of the bride, and she's realizing that oh my God, we're running out of wine. What are we going to do? And somebody solves the problem. On the third day, there was a marriage at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus was also invited to the marriage with his disciples. When the wine failed, the mother of Jesus said to him, oh, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, oh, woman, what have you to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now six stones, stone jars were standing there for the Jewish rites of purifications, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water. And they filled him up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the steward of the feast. So they took it. And when the steward of the feast tasted the water, now become wine, and did not know where it came from, though the servants had drawn the water, knew the steward of the feast, called for the bridegroom and said to him, Every man serves the good wine first. And when men have drunk freely, than the poor wine, but you have kept the good wine until now. This is the first of the signs Jesus did at Cana in Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. Go ahead. 
ahead, I dare you. Spend some time with John's gospel. If you come away scratching your head and wondering if you really get it, please know that you are in the company of many scholars and students of the Bible who have been equally puzzled by John's take on Jesus for the last 2,000 years. This one is so different from the three other Gospels. In the other three, Jesus wants to keep his identity quiet, while here in John, he's constantly talking about himself. Jesus' teaching mostly happens with parables in the other three, while in John, we hear a lot of long speeches from Jesus. The Last Supper in Mark, Matthew, and Luke all involve Jesus' blessing and passing bread and wine to his disciples, while John's Jesus uses that night to wash their feet. As we dive into Jesus' ministry in this epiphany season to get a feel for who he is, we start with, frankly, a pretty strange first miracle. Jesus, with nudging from his mother, his first teacher, who had a sense of what he was capable of, quietly and without any fanfare, took not just one, but six huge stone jars filled with water that would have been used for purification and transformed them into almost 150 gallons of wine. Now you have to remember that wedding festivals, this wasn't all going to be drunk in one night. <laughs> um, they went on for a long time, but still, still a lot of wine. This sign pointing to God, the first one of Jesus' transforming power, before he started teaching or offering a single healing touch, this is his debut, and it's at a wedding reception. His mother, the disciples, some servants, and the guy in charge of making sure there's enough wine, discover not just that there's enough to get by, but what is served late in the party is the good stuff. And this is probably after many of the guests have had quite a bit to drink already and wouldn't be able to taste the difference. Perhaps Jesus wanted folks to know that it is never too late for change. Let's remember, though, just how important hospitality was during this time. This Mediterranean culture viewed hospitality as not just being polite, but it was also a matter of survival. It was seen as vital to tend to the needs of others, because in turn, that would mean that one's own needs would also be seen to. The transformation of water to wine involved the efforts of other people. Those who loved it in the stone jars filled with water had the chance to be part of the miracle. They got to see firsthand the abundance that Jesus was offering while they did much of the heavy lifting. The wine steward is totally baffled by how the best wine usually served when everyone was sober and could tell the difference gives credit to the groom who gets to seem like this amazing host. And yet Jesus is behind all this wonder. What moved Jesus here in this strange gospel story? Was it his mother Mary urging him to action, prodding him to obey and open himself up to others? Was he just being a dutiful son or was it more? And what was Jesus holding back and waiting for anyway? Why not then? Maybe he wanted to make a more dramatic impact because after all, this is not feeding the 5,000 or healing 10 lepers. Most of the rest of the time when Jesus performs signs throughout the gospel, he has something transformative to say that captures his identity. After he fed the hungry masses, he proclaimed, I am the bread of life. When he was about to heal the man who was blind from birth, he said, I am the light of the world. What could he say about this sign? I am the life of the party? <laughs> Let's though not lose sight of the reason we devote a Sunday to this story. It's a miracle offered by Jesus. I'd venture to say that I'm not the only one here today who has ever prayed for a miracle. Praying for a miracle cure or a miracle job or a miracle solution to a seemingly impossible situation 
I'm going to guess, has been something we've all done. And then there are the times we may have experienced a miracle and maybe we were kind of hesitant to talk about it because we were afraid of being hushed or laughed at or disbelieved. And there are those who don't believe at all that there is such a thing as miracles and that everything can be explained using data or logic or science or reason. Barbara Brown Taylor talks about a colleague who explained miracles this way. The only purpose of a miracle is to remind you that you don't know how things work. She goes on to ask, do you believe in miracles? Well, then you still don't know how they work. Or do you not believe in miracles? Well, then maybe you don't know how things work. Much attention has been given to miracles, especially in scripture. And there's those who embrace them and those who write them off as so much hooey. What is equally fascinating as the miracle of this water becoming wine is the role of Jesus's mother Mary in this story. And maybe that's because she, unlike Jesus, is fully human, just like you and me. Like many a mother, and I can attest, this certainly was with mine, Mary doesn't ask a question, but rather states a fact. They have no wine. Sounds a lot like when my mother used to say, there's clothes in the dryer to be folded. <laughs> she doesn't plead with him, but only lays out the issue and waits for Jesus's response. And he responds with what, what business is this of his? And anyway, this isn't the right time for him to do something about it anyway. This is not a life and death situation. So what if the groom and his families will be embarrassed? And Jesus is not ready for all those eyes to be on him. But then Mary lays the power back in Jesus' lap when she instructs the servants to do whatever he says. And it could go either way. Mary is trusting him to do the right thing, whatever that may be. And maybe this is more of a miracle, as any of us parents know from giving a choice to our child. Jesus doesn't want to do it. The timing is off, and yet he goes ahead and does it, giving a jump start to his ministry before he's ready. And his gentle, gently prodding mother, and the amazed wine steward, and the modest water haulers, and the face saved groom are all part of the story. And now, for having heard it, we are too. In our belief and doubt, I invite us then to hear these words from Unfolding Light. You could argue about where it came from, how he might have pulled it off, if it really happened, or as John's artful opening to a series of signs, whether it's, if it's a mir real miracle or a metaphor for something in your own life, and if so, of what? Or what it means to believe and argue about whether all or many or only one of these is correct. And in fact, you could be correct. Or you could just taste the wine. Amen. Let us then go out singing on this Martin Luther King weekend. Lift every voice and sing. And, excuse me, on, found on page 519.
dear people. God's joy is poured out for you so that you might be a blessing to others. God will continually walk and work with you, relieving your burdens and giving you strength. Go into God's world rejoicing. Amen. Amen. Now, offering each other words of God's peace. peace.